All right, everybody, we're back. And in this episode, we're going to talk about your hoop house floor. Now we've already alluded to it, but the grade is going to be very important. Number one, you don't want dips in there that can collect water or tripping hazards or anything like that. So having a nice smooth surface that gently slopes away uh, where it's not going to pool on the outside and to have water diverting around it is pretty important. So as part of the prep, the site prep, you know, make sure that thing is graded. And the next thing you're going to want to do is decide what type of flooring, if any, that you're going to have. So the ways that you can figure this out are, are you going to be growing in soil? And if so, do you need to prep that with possibly a silage tarp as you are building this thing out to kind of kill all the weeds? Are you going to put landscape fabric down and use that as a weed barrier and plant in holes? All that, there's no right or wrong. It's just depending on your operation, what you're comfortable doing. Also with the soil grown, you may want to decide, and I highly suggest that even before the purchase of the high tunnel, that you get a soil test done. Uh, so if, if your soil is pretty rough or pretty bad, or is going to need a lot of amendment, it may be easier to do that before the tunnel is even up, either through an amendment or for fertilizer program or by cover cropping. Uh, keep in mind that between the silage tarping and the solarization and the amending, that, that piece of property may take well over a year to get established. So make sure that you're figuring that in with your timeline. So Julian and I both uh, utilize gravel in our greenhouses. So I was using it for a floor on a Dutch bucket hydroponic tomato setup. And so I never had to worry about what was beneath the soil or anything like that. I put down landscape fabric as a weed barrier. And then we put a good uh, solid one inch crush rock. And that allowed me to rake the rock as we were pruning the tomatoes and the cucumbers without disturbing. So like if I use pea gravel, it's, it's real easy to move that stuff around. So my one inch crush, which has a slightly jagged uh, type of rock, you could rake that out a whole lot easier. Now, I know you have pea gravel in yours. I, you're not heavily pruning like I was. So what's your experience? It, it's a good floor, but it's not a good floor long term. So eventually I had weeds growing up through the sides of the greenhouse into the gravel or Bermuda grass growing into the gravel. and it was good short term, but over over a long lifespan, um, it's it's been tough to deal with to have to deal with weeds and stuff growing through it. You now the the side of the greenhouse typically is where a lot of people get encroachment of weeds. So I'm a big fan as as you're laying down those ground posts to even if you don't want a landscape fabric floor, is to go ahead and put a four or five foot width directly in the center. So you have a couple of foot on the outside and a couple of foot on the inside. That really helps keep away the, um, the weeds. But another really huge added benefit, and one I think is probably a little bit more important, is as you're maintaining your property on the outside of the hoop house, that keeps you a good two foot away from it. So you think about string trimmers and, and throwing rocks and stuff like that. It gives you a little bit of a buffer so you're not just beating up the side of your plastic or your baseboards long term. So with a hydroponic setup, a Dutch bucket setup, or deep water culture, you may elect to pour concrete. You may elect to do what we did and put rock down. You may elect to, I've seen a lot of people just put landscape fabric down, and that really seems to work. My, my only thing that I've seen long-term on that is after a heavy rain and there's a lot of ground saturation, that landscape fabric, while you're not really stepping in mud, it is a little squishy. And I think that's a lot harder to work on. So, so just kind of consider that as an option. Also be real careful that, you know, if you have an NRCS grant and, uh, you know, it's not really going to allow for that type of operation. Now, what it may do, the next item down on our list is raised beds. So if you have an NRCS grant, you can do raised beds, but it can't be more than 12 inches tall. So if you don't have a grant, you know, the sky's the limit, do whatever you want to do. But in between these things, having a walkway that you can walk on without getting in that saturated dirt that we just talked about, having something that you can pull your carts or push a wheelbarrow through without extra work on your end, uh, that may be very beneficial. If you are working with NRCS, make sure that they approve whatever you decide to put down. Uh, mulch is almost always universally going to be accepted because that's part of building up the soil process. But if you do rock, you know, just make sure it's cool with them first. Uh, I, I really do prefer rock, especially if I know that's going to be a long-term bed. And the last like little bonus part that we're going to talk about, or I guess I'm going to talk about, you've been pretty, well, we've been Jay and Silent Bob here. You're the silent one. I got that. Okay, good. All right. All right. He's figured it out, folks. Um, 
is the access part of the door. So when we're talking about the floor, one thing that I did on my high tunnel that I didn't have landscape fabric down, we suppressed all the weeds with mulch and that was kind of our walkways, but it was at the at kind of midway point down a hill. So I tended to get a lot of oversaturation. Now we combated that with two things. Number one, uh, a double layer of four inch uh, French drain at the very front that diverted all the way around. And then number two, we put solid stones just in the walking area and the first couple of foot of that high tunnel. And what that did was no matter how saturated that became, we were able to walk on the stones. We didn't lose any growing area because that was at the end of the row that gave us access to every single row. It also gave us a, plant, a place to store tools, store the trash cans, uh, anything that we we're using in the hoop house itself. So you might want to think about which way your door swings. If you have vine crops, I do suggest that the doors go out because as you're moving these big vine crops in and out, uh, having to go around that door, uh, believe me, is a big pain because I didn't learn that lesson the first time. Uh, but if you're, if you're worried about, if you're going to use your door as a, as a part of your ventilation system, you, know, you may not want those things out to where they're swinging and banging around. So just know that you can go in, you can go out. You need to look at your operation and see what's going to be best for you. Do you have anything to add to this episode? I do not. All right. Folks, this is uh, the first one for the day. We're still doing coffee. So on the next one, we are going to talk about installing your hoops. You know, we've got we've got you to selecting everything. We've got you to ground posts. We just talked about the floor. And the next thing we're going to cover is how to install the hoops and just some things to think about that. We'll see you on the next episode.